Happening now, today is Veterans Day. We're celebrating those who served in our country's armed forces. Plus, the masking debate is heating up after a court ruled against a state-mandated PA. Well, you're going to be needing to hang on to your hats through the afternoon today. The winds really increased and big changes for the weekend. We'll talk about it in detail next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. Several ceremonies to honor those serving in the armed forces took place today in Jamestown on this Veterans Day. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. The veterans of foreign wars post-53, those with the local American Legion and Vietnam Veterans of America chapter, held a ceremony in downtown Jamestown at the corner of 3rd and Main Streets. A 21-gun salute and music from the Jamestown High School Marching Band was featured along with a service at St. Luke's Episcopal Church just a block away. Firing Squad Commander Sean McNally explains the significance of the day and what he wants everyday residents to take away from it. We should always honor our veterans and we should uh, enjoy our freedoms that we've delivered for them. Now later today, the groups will host another ceremony at Soldier's Circle in Lakeview Cemetery. Well, this Veterans Day, musicians from across Chautauqua County have joined forces to celebrate U.S. servicemen and women. Band students from Brockton, Casadega Valley, Chautauqua Lake Central School, Jamestown Public School, Southwestern School, and the SUNY Fredonia School of Music perform taps at 11 a.m. precisely from several dozen locations countywide. This is an extension of the taps across Jamestown, an effort launched by Jamestown Middle School band students last year. Now, Purcell Middle School Band Director Mark Lynch says this is not just limited to brass musicians. Taps is typically played either on a trumpet or really on a bugle, but, you know, you could play it on any instrument. We just feel like we wouldn't want a student not to be able to participate and to honor our veterans and to really feel this sense of community engagement just because they're not playing a trumpet. So we have everyone from percussionists and tuba players and trumpets and flute players. The event was inspired by the National Taps Across America movement, which was first started during the pandemic as a way to honor service members on Memorial Day. Now, they're hopeful that this will help instill in young people a sense of honor and gratitude for the sacrifices of our armed forces. Well, in other news today, an order by Pennsylvania's acting health secretary that require masks inside K-12 schools and child care facilities was thrown out yesterday by a state court that said they lacked the authority to do so. The question now is, will students here locally still have to wear their mask in the classroom? Erie News Now's Molly Samora reports. TAPS is typically it since the beginning of school this year. I mean, that's the big difference. Superintendent of Warren School District Amy Stewart tells me they've been dealing with more and more COVID cases this school year compared to last year. The issue of masking in the classroom has been a big topic of discussion. The Board of Education has been frustrated that we haven't been able to use local control you know, and make, those, make our own decisions here. But even with the news that came out yesterday, that Pennsylvania Commonwealth Court decision to throw out the state mask mandate for schools, 
the school has decided right now to not make any changes. When kids enter the classroom today, face masks will still be required. Stewart tells me it's really split down the line, whether parents want their child masked or not. 50-50 on just about everything. If you look at the vaccination percentages and where people are, so there are folks that are very passionate, um, you know, one way or the other about, about masks and vaccination, quite frankly. Molly Samora, Erie News Now. Molly, thank you. Commonwealth Court sided four to one with the ranking Republican in the state Senate and others who sued to challenge the masking order that took effect in early September as a result of the pandemic. A similar lawsuit now underway here in New York as well. well Chautauqua County's public facilities director is resigning. Director Brad Bentley announced the news during the county legislature audit and control committee meeting yesterday. Bentley says the resignation is at the request of County Executive P.J. Wendell. It's just what needs to be done at this time. And uh, I've agreed to stay on until December 1st to work towards transition issues. Um, and uh, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity to serve. Um, you know, I, I was talking with Mr. Gould this morning, if I could share our conversation. Sure. Um, everybody should have the opportunity to, to be in a public service position. It's uh, rewarding. It's informative. It's, it's learned. Um, it makes you a better person. Uh, it's made me a better person. He took control of the role in August 2019 as the director of public facilities. He managed county services like road construction crews, winter plow services, and the county landfill. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now, streaming live on our Facebook page, channel 716 on Roku, and of course, WNYNewsNow.com. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comment section down below. We always love to hear from you. It's uh, great to see David. Good to see uh, Missy, Dawn, and Mike as well. Hopefully you all are having a great job and uh, certainly I want to take a, a real quick moment before we get to Dakota's first peek at the weather to thank all of our veterans today as uh, it's it's so incredible the sacrifices that they make uh, for our nation every single day and those who are actively serving right now I, I think uh, you know may, may we bless them with our prayers and uh, those kids too J uh, Dakota uh, in the Jamestown marching band they did it Excellent, excellent job there at the mm -hmm. top of the show. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I've mentioned before on our show that I have friends who are currently in the military right now. And of course, I come from a military family. My grandfather on my dad's side served in World War II. So, you know, he was a sharpshooter for the 7th, 77th Tank Division. God so, awesome. you know, so I come from a military family and, you know, yeah. so. And, you know, we're delivering a pretty nice forecast for them. I know you have really no control over that, yeah. but nevertheless. Yeah, I was talking with my neighbor this morning before I walked out the door and I told him something could be coming by next week and he's like, no, no, don't say it, but I'm sorry. I'm just the messenger, folks. Uh, the Warren City Bank Skycam shows you the clouds starting to move on in across the area today, but we're actually mainly dry throughout much of this uh, Veterans Day. We should stay dry for the most part, but uh, it's really going to turn windy through the afternoon and through the evening hours. That's when the strongest wind gusts will arrive. We'll talk about those wind gusts a little bit later on. So if you've already started, like our family, if you've already started, you know, you know, putting out those, uh, those, those, uh, you know, those uh, Christmas decorations. Yeah, you might want to make sure they're secured. 55 was the high yesterday. Started the day at 42, 69, and 12 are the record highs and lows. So another mild day today. The clouds pick up through the afternoon. Sun and clouds through the afternoon. Southwest wind 10 to 25. Wind gusts around 40, but this is going to start to increase as we go through the afternoon, 57 to 65. So get out and enjoy this while you can because it all goes downhill from here. We'll tell you where it's going and is there going to be any snow in the forecast. We'll talk about it with that seven day later on in the show. Coronavirus cases continue to increase in Chautauqua County with 350 new cases reported over the past week. The County Health Department announced this during their weekly COVID-19 update that infections increased nearly 12 percent from October 31st through November 6th. Two additional deaths connected to the virus were also reported. The first patient to pass away was in their 60s, the second in their 70s. There are now 400 active cases countywide with the seven-day average positivity rate at 
Now, of the new cases, officials said 126 of them are here in Jamestown and mostly involve people who are unvaccinated. A concerning stat for Chautauqua County Health Director Christine Schuyler, who says misinformation is slowing the vaccine rollout. We have a long ways to go still, you know, to, to get enough people vaccinated um, to get us into a good place in our county. And um, misinformation is easy to put out. You know, it's just a click of your, your keyboard here and you've got whatever information you want to put out there. As for local vaccination numbers, New York State reporting 57 percent of people have received at least one dose of the shot, making up more than 72,800 folks here in Chautauqua County. Well, the good news that vaccination for kids 5 to 11 starting to ramp up. Bad news, though, kids COVID cases are ramping up, too. And there are serious concerns now about vaccine inequity and a risk of measles making a comeback. Britt Conway breaking down what's happening. All done. All done with his first COVID-19 vaccine. And he's not the only one. The White House estimates nearly a million kids 5 to 11 have gotten their first dose. With about 700,000 pharmacy appointments on the books, 114 children's hospitals and doctor's offices are offering vaccinations too. And there are mobile clinics in some places, along with school clinics. But getting more kids vaccinated is often a battle against hesitancy and sometimes equity. A recent poll shows parents with lower incomes are less likely to get their kids in that 5 to 11 age group vaccinated with concerns about getting time off work or finding a way to get to a vaccination site, along with educational disparities. Experts say more education generally comes with more acceptance of science. COVID-19 vaccines aren't the only vaccine doctors are worried about, though. The CDC says 22 million babies worldwide missed their vaccinations last year during the pandemic, worsening the global threat of measles. All the while, kids' cases of COVID are on the rise again. The American Academy of Pediatrics says this past week, there was a more than 6% increase in cases from the week before. And winter is coming. This is at its heart a winter virus, and I think that as we head into winter, we will likely see a bump in cases. That's the, the most likely scenario. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Coming up, the latest in the probe into former Governor Cuomo's alleged misconduct. And later, Jamestown High School Red Raiders football are gearing up for their championship game this Friday. We speak with their coach ahead of the big day. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Welcome to Honest John's Pizzeria, where you are the most important customer. Everything from freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has it all. And don't forget the ice cream! Order online today or check out our two great locations with buffets ready for every appetite. Don't I have the best job in the world? What could you lose in a home fire? Your possessions? Your home? Your memories? Don't let your world go up in smoke. Make sure you have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones because fire is everyone's fight. This message was brought to you by the Jamestown Fire Department and the Chautauqua Safety Village. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first.
Transcripts from former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's interview with investigators were released yesterday. The New York Attorney General's Office also put out documents and exhibits from its investigation into sexual harassment allegations against him. The information is the backbone of the August report that said Cuomo acted inappropriately with 11 women. The transcripts of the 11-hour questioning is 515 pages total. It includes a tense moment between the governor and investigators trying to define the word girlfriend. Cuomo resigned one week after the report was released. He denies any wrongdoing. Well, last week, Congressman Reed passed a, Congress passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, and today, our local Republican representative is defending his vote, vote for it, while many of his Republican colleagues went the other direction. Our Washington correspondent, Rachel Knapp, reports. After the Senate passed the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill a few months ago, the House chamber erupted in cheers late Friday night after moving that bill forward to President Biden's desk on a 228 to 206 vote. Members touted that this will deliver $500 billion in new federal investments over the next five years, touching everything from ports, bridges, roads, and broadband. New York Representative Tom Reed says this bill is critical There's for his district than and than for America. Uh, we got almost $100 billion, for example, when you look at the rail provisions. And we make the locomotives uh, and, the, and the passenger rail cars uh, here in the district. Um, and I'll just tell you, that's going to help our uh, folks have a job for years to come. The congressman is one of 13 Republicans who crossed party lines to vote for this bill. To me, this was a, a vote that I believed in. Uh, it was the right vote. Other Republicans who voted down this bill say they voted no for a slew of reasons, like some say it'll just increase inflation, while others say it'll just add to our debt. Representative Glenn Thompson said in part that this infrastructure bill fails to adequately address one of the most critical infrastructure needs, broadband connectivity. Representative Fred Keller says this is an irresponsible Democratic package and that it paves the way for Biden's social spending bill. Representative Mike um, Kelly also voted against this bill. Roads, rivers, runways, railways, uh, you're making sure that, that people in the rural areas have broadband. That is a good spend. 50 cents of every dollar will address that. The other 50 cents is stuff that I have never heard of before and don't, don't look at as a really good return on the investment. But when it comes down to infrastructure, Rep. Reed says this should not be a bipartisan issue. This investment is going to benefit American workers, American people. And I will just tell you, um, those that want to play politics 24-7, uh, that's their choice. Uh, but I came to Washington to get something done. At the Capitol, Rachel Knapp reporting. Rachel, thank you. Representative Reed wants to make clear that just because he voted for the bill, he will be voting against Biden's proposed $1.7 trillion social spending and climate change legislation. Well, the Pennsylvania Senate passed two pieces of gun legislation that Governor Tom Wolf and gun safety advocates say is dangerous for the Commonwealth. The two Senate bills passed just two weeks after Governor Wolf held a press conference with advocates to address the legislation. The law would prevent local jurisdictions from imposing ordinances that are more restrictive than laws passed by the General Assembly. Republicans say local firearm ordinances vary from one jurisdiction to another and that uniform statewide regulations are needed. The other bill would allow Pennsylvanians 18 and up to carry a loaded concealed firearm in public without a permit. During floor debate, Republican senators argued that law-abiding citizens should not need the government's permission to exercise their Second Amendment right. Well, if you're scratching your head at the latest grocery tab, it's with good reason. Prices from the food aisle to gas pumps are rising. As Karen Kafa reports, it's the fastest climb in more than 30 years. Top economic officials say it's temporary, but American consumers are feeling the squeeze just ahead of the holiday season. Up and away. The Labor Department says prices for consumer goods and services kept climbing in October. Another 0.9% for the month and 6.2% over the last year. The biggest year-over-year -year surge since November of 1990. 
pushing overall numbers higher. Meat, poultry, fish, and eggs altogether up 1.7% in October and up 11.9% over last year. Used car prices up 2.5% during the month and 26.4% for the year. And energy prices, including gasoline, up 4.8% in October and 30% over last year, a concern ahead of winter. Families for the last several months have been spending more money for gasoline, and now these home heating prices are added to that. President Joe Biden said reversing the inflation trend is, quote, a top priority. And top economic officials argue it's a temporary consequence of the pandemic economy, as a rapid rise in demand meets a shortage of raw materials and supply chain bottlenecks. We all have to be just a little bit patient uh, because we are seeing that the action we are taking is working. We just have to stick with it, you know, long enough to solve the problem. Another report from the Labor Department said an increase in average hourly wages in October was outpaced by price hikes as Americans plan their holiday spending. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. Fast, accurate, and every day, first defense weather. Yeah, we're all having to do a little penny pinching right now, and uh, that's just, you know. But uh, the low temperatures this morning, not doing any penny pinching. The temperatures, though, 42 is where we started the day. How about 33 in uh, Randolph, 29 in Climber. So, again, the cooler spots is pretty much those valley locations. Again, as we talk about, the valleys often get the coldest at night. But the clouds have started to return. Downtown Jamestown right now, pair of fives at the airport as a noon hour. Healthy southwest wind of 13, the wind gust at 21. That's going to be increasing as we go through the afternoon hours. So yeah, you're going to be hanging onto your hat as we go through the later part of the day. Justin mentioned it earlier, Section 6 championship. It is Jamestown versus Frontier at Highmark Stadium. That's of course the home of the Buffalo Bills. 59 at 8 o'clock tomorrow and the temperature should stay steady and uh, it's going to be a relatively nice night for uh, some football, but there will be some rain arriving and we're hopeful that the rain should hold off for the majority of the game. Now, talking about the winds here, there is a wind advisory in place for basically the western southern tier and uh, that far northern section of Erie County, which basically includes the Lake Erie shoreline. And this goes all the way until uh, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. And uh, the strongest winds are going to be near the Lake Erie shoreline and across the highest hills. And here's the reason why a complex storm system is now moving into the Great Lakes region. So a warm front's going to push through first. Then behind it, we have a strong cold front and the winds are really going to uh, uptick out ahead of this next system. So here's the newest run of the computer model you really the clouds coming in through the afternoon then rain showers return as we go through the overnight hours and again maybe some patches of moderate to heavy rainfall as well as we go through the uh, overnight hours the rain should taper off on uh, Friday maybe a scattered rain shower in the morning tapering off but I think we'll lead to some partly to mostly sunny skies for much of the area and then Friday I uh, notice what pops up here we have some snow showers coming in later Friday night and into Saturday morning and then those are going to continue as we go through the weekend. So future wind gusts here, we're talking possibly by around seven o'clock tonight, wind gusts of, of more than 40 to upwards of 50 miles an hour. And then the winds are going to continue to increase by about 10 o'clock. We're looking at gusts of around 53 there in Dunkirk. So it will be a windy night. 60 at one o'clock today, sun and clouds mix 57 at five. Temperatures not going much anywhere. Winds increase. We should stay dry at around nine o'clock. And now the next seven days of your life are on the screen. 54 tomorrow 40 on Saturday and the rain and snow showers will continue throughout early next week. Looks like by next Tuesday we should see all snow but it's looking like light snow at this point and we turn milder and drier again for the middle of next week. We'll take a break and be right back. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. The registration is being run through the Chamber sites, which is www.jtny.com. So if you go to click on that link, there's a, a fillable form online that you can just type in. We'll want to know, you know, obviously a business name or a community group's name, uh, the location, a contact name, and then if you just plan on marching or if you actually have a float, 
I come from a small business family. So small business to me is very important. I understand about being in downtown Jamestown and being a small business. I want to meet with them and I want to gauge if they're going to be open, number one. If they're number two, would they like to promote a special or something that evening that they can do just for the parade? A good friend of mine, like a teacher at Washington Middle School, Lisa Peters. You know, what do you think about uh, Jamestown, New York, a diverse city celebrating traditions from around the world? Perfect. That's us. That's who we are. That's a great theme. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television, waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Jamestown's Red Raiders varsity football team is set to play their Section 6 Class A championship game against Frontier tomorrow at Highmark Stadium, home of the Buffalo Bills. Our Julia Grass is breaking down how head coach Tom Langworthy is preparing the undefeated squad for this matchup. We feel like our team's built for these moments. We've got a, a lot of experience and a lot of games under our belt with this group, and we've been in some great battles over the years. The team spent the week focusing on the fundamentals, blocking, tackling, and protecting the football. You know, I spend a lot of time um, the, the 24 hours after the game watching our game instead of moving on. The coach gave the credit of their 10-0 season to the hardworking kids on the team, as well as the families that support them. You know, they're great. They're great people, and, and you can't win without great people. You know, you could have all the talent in the world, but if they don't have good character, you're not going to be very successful. Continuity has also been a factor in the team's success, as Langworthy explains that the entirety of the varsity team staff has been together the entire 14 years he has coached. And it's important, you know, that players know they're going to get our best and we're taking it seriously and that we know the players are going to give us their best, be on time be ready, be coachable, and have a good attitude. Langworthy also credits the community's love of football and the long-standing tradition it has become to the team's culture. And at the end of the day, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to teach young people life lessons through athletics, but you're also trying to teach them that winning's important and achievement's important, success is important, but it's hard. It's hard to reach your goals. Friday's game will be their second matchup of the season against Frontier, the first one by six points. The coach says their opponent is a strong physical team that they aren't surprised to be seeing again. The thing that we preach for our kids is that their best is good enough. They're, um, they, they're prepared for this moment. They're, they're ready for this moment. They don't have to do anything different than what they've been doing. But we just want to do what we do every week a little bit better this week. Stars Jalen Butera, Trey Drake, and Ben Anderson hope to lead their team to victory with the help of what the coach calls the backbone of the team, the offensive line. Our tackles, Joey Delgado and Julian McGoy. Our guards are Nick Maraglia and Dre Scarlin. And our center is Caleb Bain. And those guys together have almost 100 starts under their belt because many, you know, three of those guys played as sophomores for us. This is the coach's fifth time leading his team to Highmark Stadium, where he has a 2-2 two two record. He hopes to increase this to 3-2 and, and play their best game yet on Friday. Julia Gress, WNY News Now. All right, Julia, I'm sure a lot of the city looking forward to that match up too. You can catch it on Spectrum for uh, those cable customers. And then uh, next day on WNY Athletics Saturday morning. So. Certainly be an exciting one, and I know, Dakota, uh, we've talked about this before. Um, we might be pretty biased here being uh, Jamestown folks. I'm a Falconer grad, but mm -hmm. I, I get just as excited, I think, because at the end of the day, as Coach Langworthy talked about, it's not so much about football, but about building strong young men. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's great to see that uh, they're doing that on their squad. And they're doing so well. I mean, undefeated, if they win, yep. uh, oh, gosh. I don't want to talk it up too much because mm -hmm. you know how that, how that goes, right. right? But, gosh. But, but, you know, but, you know, I've mentioned it before. If there's two things you never question about Jamestown, it is 
the Red Raiders, varsity football, and our marching band. Oh, Those amen. two, you just don't question. No. They're the best. Yeah, they really are. And it's all about the kids. It goes back to the kids. They work so hard. You'd think they were a, a pro team. <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. Well, that's it for us. We'll leave you with this live look over Chautauqua Lake. News 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com. Have a great day. Dakota and I are back tomorrow.